Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for coming here today. And the purpose of calling this <coughs> news conference was to clarify some of the points in connection with our investigation into Theodore Bundy. Detective Couch is here and will be free to answer any of your questions of what he found through the interview or interrogation that he had with uh, Bundy at the Florida State Penitentiary uh, Sunday. So uh, Detective Couch will come up and he'll answer or I'll answer any questions that you might have. Come on up. Any of you have any particular questions? Yes. Uh, what Let me uh, help Dennis on that a little bit. All right, at this particular time, uh, Dennis, in talking to uh, Bundy, admitted to the homicide and kidnapping of uh, Wilcox girl and the Kent girl from up in Bountiful. He has also given us an indication on a map where the two bodies of these two individual victims may be found. The unsolved homicides would be easier maybe for me to tell you the ones that we have that we feel could be solved by what we determined from Bundy. That was only those two is all that Bundy actually admitted to. There were two other ones that he did not answer on, and that was the Smith girl and the Amy girl. Although we have physical evidence that, in our opinion, connects Bundy to those two homicides. Other than that, Bundy has made a comment to one of the other investigators that there were eight homicides here in the state of Utah. We do not know who those other four victims might be. We asked him about the Baird girl from up in Layton who disappeared from a convenience store. He denied having anything to do with that particular victim. We did this morning receive information just prior to the execution that Bundy had given the name or the location of a fifth victim to the investigator from the governor's office of Florida, and they are for forwarding that up to us immediately. Anything else, Dennis? So he didn't directly admit to eight killings to you. He said he gave that to the Washington investigator? No, <clears throat> I, we didn't say it was a Washington investigator. He's He's made admissions that he's responsible for eight killings in the, in the Utah area. Um, he admitted or um, gave me information that he's responsible, like the sheriff indicated, for Debbie Kent and Nancy Wilcox. He also showed uh, on the map a general area in which we might locate their bodies. There were three additional names besides the eight that were reported about this morning because they placed Bundy here four years earlier than had suspected. Are those still open cases that you are maybe now looking at Bundy was involved with, or have those been taken off the list? Those cases were added to the list because of the time element that Bundy was in this particular uh, location. The uh, fact was that all of our cases during that period of time were possibilities, not the fact that Bundy was responsible. The only thing that will be cleared from these cases are the ones that we can actually tied directly to Bundy, either by his confession or by physical evidence that we can develop at a later time. We have an awful lot of work yet to do on all these cases, and they will continue. We got word from the Leatherberry family that there is no connection there. There was no indication from Bundy that the Leatherberry was one of his victims. And the reason the Leatherberry victim was added to our list is because of the time element and the, the manner in which she disappeared and the way we had found her body was similar to the other ones that Bundy had uh, been responsible for. Regarding the confirmed uh, victims, Kent and uh, Wilcox, did Bundy tell you what he did with the bodies? Did he leave them out in the open? Did he bury them? Did he take them, take them into the mountains? He, he indicated to me that, <clears throat> excuse me, that he did bury them, and it was in uh, both of them in uh, mountainous areas. How detailed was the map? He was having a difficult time uh, with uh, the map. Uh, you have to remember, uh, Mr. Bundy was not a native Utah. Um, it's been almost 15 years ago now. And uh, I felt like he was doing the best he could at the time. How soon will you start the search for those bodies? 
We'll start a search for the bodies just as quick as we can look at the areas to see if the conditions are such that we can put people in there. We don't know how much snow is in those particular areas at this time, but that search will start just as quick as we can get into those particular areas. How about the general area? <coughs> Pardon? The general area? Yes, the general area is uh, uh, central eastern Utah. <laughs> Let me give you one point in connection with the... Uh, with the uh, conversation that Detective Koch had with Bundy, and that was the limited amount of time that we had. Uh, we did not have the time to get into each individual case before uh, Mr. Detective Koch's time <coughs> ran out there at the prison. Did you feel that if you had more time, uh, that, was he being cooperative? I mean, if you had more time, would that have made any difference? I think Bundy was cooperative to a point. He was still. Um, using the system, in my opinion, to the point where he was hoping for a stay. He did give us enough information to know that he was certainly involved in a number of homicides in which he cleared the two of them, as we mentioned. Um, but to have got into the details of all of the other cases that we wanted to talk to him about, we'd have had to have at least a couple of days to do that. And Detective Couch had about an hour and a half only. Should you have asked for more time? Did we ask for more time? We did ask for more time. We had a couple of times set for us which were canceled. In fact, we felt uh, very fortunate to get the hour and a half that we did have. Sir, you said you had more work to do Pardon? Cases. You said you had more work to do on the cases. Did, did Ted Bundy give you anything at all on the other cases outside of the ones that he confessed to that you're going to be able to use the key off of to, to investigate further? No, he didn't. And, but we do have some physical evidence that was recovered from his car some time back, and those cases will be resent back for evaluation. The now, evidence. It, I mean, they've been, it's been going on for a long time, and you've had that evidence for a long time, and, and it wasn't moved on before. How can you move forward now? Well, because of the fact that we now have the names of some of the other victims. The problem we have with this case with Bundy, there's a lot of missing persons that are still listed as missing that could have been or probably was maybe a victim of Bundy. Uh, some people are still on the list as not as possible suspects, but as just missing persons. And these are the kind of things that we have to do. Sheriff, how confident do you feel that you can close the books on some of these unresolved cases? Or is there a possibility we may never know that? The possibility is we never will close a case on some of them. Without the confession of Bundy or without good physical evidence that, that our county attorney Yoakum would uh, allow us to close the cases, those cases have to remain open. The cases that will be closed is the ones that we have physical evidence that tells us that Bundy's responsible, either by uh, something physical or by eyeball witnesses putting him with the victims or the confessions that Detective Couch brought back from Florida. Can you say how confident you are other than the Kent case and the Wilcox case? How many other cases you're confident that Bundy did? I'm confident of the, uh, the Smith girl and the Amy girl. Is that Melissa Smith? Melissa Smith. No, he did not deny him. He did not. He did not. He never has denied him. He didn't deny him to me back in 1975 or 6 when we interrogated him about him. He did not deny him to Detective Couch when he hit him with him at the prison. But he did deny the uh, Baird woman? Yes, he did. Detective Couch, while you were talking with Ted Bundy, what was his demeanor and why did he accept the offer to cooperate? Because he wanted to make a No, he gave an indication. Uh, <clears throat> as to why he was confessing. But first of all, I'll touch on his demeanor. Uh, Ted was not the bold, uh, defiant uh, individual that we have observed on TV in the, in the courthouse there in Florida. He was, he was a defeated person. He was uh, extremely fatigued, uh, very pensive at times, uh, even to the point where he was, like, uh, falling asleep. I sometimes wonder if he was faking that. He uh, had not shaved, it appeared, for uh, approximately 24 hours or so. And uh, during the uh, interview, there was, a, like uh, Sheriff Hayward indicated, it was an hour and a half interview. Approximately an hour into the interview, <coughs> he uh, began to break down and cry and uh, stated that he was sorry. Uh, he was not sorry for himself, sorry for the, uh, the family families, and he indicated that uh, he was appalled by the senselessness of it all, and uh, wished that he could have uh, 
come forward uh, some years ago and, and uh, talked about it. But he did, he did not elaborate on that. He didn't, he didn't say why he didn't come forward before. He just said that uh, the circumstances were such, and I assume that's that's probably a lot of his personality and his, uh, his um, survival. You had a couch. Well, there's uh, a lot of details that uh, that Mr. Bundy uh, related to us, and uh, when I obtained the uh, information from the prison, I was being inundated by uh, news people. It was decided that I would give uh, Sheriff Hayward uh, just some of the basic information, and then I was going to leave town, get back as soon as I could, analyze the information, and then we would uh, disseminate it, and uh, and then attempt to try to locate the uh, bodies. But the Wilcox family was contacted yesterday and the Kent family, according to our sources, as far as this morning, Well, I'm unaware of... Let me answer that, uh, uh, Dennis. The Wilcox uh, mother was notified by me yesterday because of the fact that the news media was already out there interviewing her. And I didn't want her to get hit as with the shock of having this brought to her without first having the information from us. That's how Mrs. Wilcox was notified. Sure. <coughs> The only feelings I have that uh, Ted has gotten just exactly what he deserved. Uh, it was a brutal, vicious uh, spree that he was on, and uh, if anybody ever fit the death penalty as such, uh, Ted Bundy did, and this morning that uh, climaxed. Could we ask Mr. Yoakum to make a similar comment? Yeah, you were involved in this. <coughs> Seventy-four, I think, is when we started. Was it right? goes back a long way. I have feelings similar to the sheriff that if there was ever a person that uh, deserved, you can deserve it, the death penalty it would be Ted Bundy. Um, there's certainly been a lot of lives touched by Ted here in Utah, Washington, Colorado, now Florida. That uh, and a lot of dead people as a result of Ted. I, I, I think uh, what probably might have happened hadn't we had an alert sheriff's department in 1975 uh, with the aid of the Murray Police Department. As you remember the Duranch case was a, a Murray case originally and worked together with the Murray Police Department and the sheriff's department to obtain that conviction of Bundy of that kidnapping case and the thought goes through my mind how many dead bodies would there be throughout the United States if we hadn't had an alert police department and sheriff's office to stopped Ted when we did, and of course it was only because he escaped in Colorado that uh, we had more victims in Florida and maybe even victims in Michigan where he went after he escaped from Colorado, but uh, I think the Sheriff's Department and the Murray Police Department, the fact that we were able to catch him at the time we did and under those circumstances is a real credit to our law enforcement in this county. Working in the system, how do you uh, feel about the fact that it's taken 11 years for this to take place with these well, uh, in, any capital case takes a long time, and uh, actually 11 years uh, compared to what we've seen in Utah is, is not long. Uh, fairly fast, actually, uh, with the track that uh, goes on nationally. Uh, yeah, I'm upset, as, as I think all law enforcement, uh, the legal community prosecution, with the length of time it takes and the number of appeals that are available to people on death row, I think that we would certainly... Uh, ought to look to our Congress uh, to legislate on the federal level to uh, limit the numbers of appeals and certainly speed up the appeal process in capital cases. And I certainly would hope that uh, the community would support that idea, too. Detective Cash, uh, given uh, Bundy's demeanor, do you think you would have gotten more out of him if you had spent more time, if, if you had requested a, a delay in the execution? Certainly? Well, it wasn't a matter of... <clears throat> We wouldn't even requested that. Um, we've we talked about that with uh, Sheriff Hayward, uh, Attorney General uh, Van Dam, even um, some of the family members, and uh, no one was in agreement with any concessions on our part. But given his demeanor, do you, in other words, do you think he got out of him what you were going to get out of him, based on what he was? No, I think if uh, if we had more time, we would have got more information. Detective, can you? Uh, relate to us a little bit about the drawings of the map and at what point in the that took place and, and what kind of map is it? Is it just is it a map on a blank piece of paper or 
It's a regular map of Utah. It was, you have to understand. Yes, of Utah. It was a very slow moving uh, interview. It took uh, a, a complete hour uh, for those two girls. And uh, you must be uh, informed that they, they uh, informed me I was only going to have 30 minutes that night. Earlier in the day, I was supposed to have had an hour and a half, but that meeting was canceled Saturday night. I was informed 11 o'clock Saturday night that Mr. Bundy had changed his mind and thought I was negative toward him and toward his case. Uh, in uh, reviewing that information, uh, and later on, it was determined that it was um, there were attorney general representatives from every other agency that was down there except Utah. I don't know what their, uh, well, I don't want to speculate on, on what their intent was to get all of the AG people down there. So consequently, Sunday, I received a call from Sheriff Hayward, who had been in touch with Mr. Van Dam, and uh, Sheriff Hayward wanted me to call Mr. Van Dam about the situation down there, which I did. And Mr. Van Dam said he had been in touch with, uh, in fact, received a phone call from attorneys from uh, Bundy's camp. And they wanted to know why a representative wasn't down there. And uh, uh, what that conversation is, I don't know. You'd have to check with Mr. Van Dam. But um, subsequently, Mr. Van Dam indicated that he uh, uh, would, would empower me to act on his behalf if need be. And he would go along with whatever law enforcement would want if, if the question was posed to him. with Debbie Kent and Wilcox. <clears throat> what we have is, is uh, that links them is the confession of Bundy and what he told Detective Couts in the interview. What we have on the other two is physical evidence that we picked up out of the car that belonged to Bundy, which was analyzed also that we had had Bundy identified by the Utah County authorities as being uh, associate and uh, in the company of the Amy girl in uh, the area of Lehigh. That's all, and that was due to the time element we had and the time it took to get out of Bundy at this particular point. The locations on the map. The, the chances of solving any other cases besides the, the four that we've talked about specifically, either physical evidence or confession, are, are, are nil at this point. It's pretty close. It's pretty tough. We've got an awful lot of work to do yet. Those cases will all be reviewed based upon what we do have from the other investigators. We hope that uh, at some point, We'll be able to bring these investigators together to look at what they learned from Bundy and if, in fact, there was anything in their tapes that may refer to the Utah cases. Yeah, that's, that's my question. Is there any indication, either from Washington or any other investigator, including the FBI, that other names in Utah were mentioned to other investigators? That hasn't been determined yet, and that's what we hope to do in the future. Sheriff, how much time and money has been spent on the Ted Bundy case in Utah? I have no idea. I have no idea. He's going to have to check the visa card that I took down there. For his, <laughs> wait for the receipts on that. Sheriff, for a point of clarification, could you give us now a list of the four victims that you believe now are victims of Ted Bundy and those that you think may be related and those that you're looking into? I can give you the four that we have, uh, we feel are, are Bundy is responsible for. The other four that might make up the eight that he referred to is still open. Uh, we don't know which ones they would be. Uh, the one would be the Wilcox, Kent, Amy, and Smith. Of the two he admitted to, can, can you tell us, Detective, how well he remembered those events and uh, when he was pointing it out on the map, how he did so, and if he remembered dates and specifics? He was not specific about uh, very many of the details. Um, and uh, I did not press him. I, when, uh, when I was driving out to the prison, I realized I only had 30 minutes to talk to Mr. Bundy, and I had two confirmed homicides and three missing girls that we were concerned about. I knew that Mr. Bundy was uh, 36 hours away from the, from the electric chair. Uh, I realized also that they uh, had canceled my meeting just the day before, and um, for reasons that he uh, had indicated he thought I was negative against his case, which 
I don't believe that to be the case, but uh, I did become aware, and we were knowledgeable about the fact that Bundy has always disliked Utah authorities, and we feel the reason is uh, Utah was his downfall. This is where he was arrested and convicted initially, and that started his downfall. You said he didn't have a lot of specifics when he told you about the shooting, he told him he pointed him out, and he didn't recall dates or anything like that? No, that's correct. Uh, I went back to that a second time, and uh, I said, first of all, I said we have three missing girls and uh, two confirmed homicides. Um, when I finished with um, Wilcox and Kent and asked him about Baird, he, uh, he laughed, no, he says, I, you're not going to put that one on me. I went back to it a second time later on, and he also said negative to that. Another time I mentioned about three women being uh, missing that we were interested and uh, he made the statement no there's more than that and of course I was thinking of Baird being one of the people involved in those three missing persons but when he said no there's more than that and I asked him how many he said two more but Couch, yeah. yesterday you said that uh, that Buddy was uh, I think you said pulling your chain and today you mentioned that uh, he was faking you thought he was faking during part of this interview how confident are you that we can Well, I believed him. I was there, and uh, I talked to the other investigators. Uh, I think there was enough questions and answers that that, uh, that I asked and that he answered that, uh, that I know he's responsible for those two girls that we talked about. Did you believe him when he said he was sorry? Uh, yes, I believe. Uh, I think that's what uh, brought him to finally tell some uh, some of this. Uh, horrendous activities that he's been involved in for so many years. I, I, I do believe that uh, he wants to uh, tell the families that he was sorry. Detective, you touched on it, some of the pressure that you went through. What went through your mind when you sat down face to face with Bundy, knowing the constraints that you were in? Well, I was, I was constantly aware of the, of the time factor. Uh, when he was very slow and deliberate with me, it was extremely frustrating, and uh, I did not want to lose uh, uh, my coolness and anger him. Uh, the man was looking uh, at an electric chair. He could have got up and walked out of it. I wanted to get as much information as I could on the three missing girls. That's what I was concerned about, um, and that's what I was geared up for. Did Nancy bear the only other name? Yes, uh, of the th three girls, I at one point, uh, in fact, I was being pressed to get up and leave the room. My time was up, and Mr. Bundy was saying that he was ready to go to bed. He'd had enough. Uh, his his uh, mind was all scrambled. Uh, obviously, it looked like he hadn't slept for a while. He's been under uh, a lot of questioning. Uh, unlike myself, the investigators from those other agencies had two or three shots at the man. Uh, I only had the one shot, and uh, I was given five or ten minutes, and uh, I just quickly asked him about Laura, Amy, and Melissa Smith all in one sentence, and uh, the man could not look me in the eye. He uh, put his head in his hands, and uh, he would not answer that question, and uh, we got up and uh, departed. What time? That was... Um, Nine o'clock that I finished. Sure. Can you tell us how big of an area you're going to have to search? I mean, then you're dealing with a Utah highway map. Central Eastern Utah. Uh, we we think that we'll be able to, with what the information he gave us, pin this down to approximately probably a mile within where we feel that he may have uh, uh, buried these people. Uh, the areas that he has given us. Uh, and listening to the tapes, he was pretty pacific in the areas. There was some confusion on some of the highway numbers, but uh, on the last one down in the farther south area, he pinpointed and marked it with an X. And we're very familiar with that area. And also in the eastern part of the state, 
uh, was another one that he marked, and we feel that we can find that by the information he gave us. Now, I'm sure that confused you. Pardon? They're buried. <laughs> the, uh, the indication and the information that he gave Detective Couch was that he had buried them, put dirt on them, put rocks on them, then put more dirt on them so that they would be not accessible to animals. It's going to be extremely difficult to find something It's always difficult to find them out, but we'll do our best to locate them. We've got a lot of people eager to get out there and look for them. Uh, Washington County, Kane County, and possibly San Pete County. I can't answer that, Dave. It's a it's a change in the MO that he designed, and of course uh, we were finding the bodies, which might have been the reason, finding them pretty quickly after they were were to. Uh, done away with. The one in American Fork Canyon we found in a short period of time. Uh, um, the Melissa Smith, we don't feel that she had been there more than a few hours when we found her. So that might have been the reason, and it might have been the reason that he went farther away than what he did uh, on those previous cases. Sheriff, where does the victim's name, Sandra Weaver, fit in? Is she one of the ones you're considering? Sandra Weaver uh, was a girl that disappeared uh, and body was found in Colorado. Um, that was only another situation that came up in view of the time period and the uh, manner in which uh, Bundy had been operating. Her name was put in there. We couldn't overlook any of those unsolved homicides of those females during that period of time, and that was the reason their names were put on the list. Where do you feel like they fit in now? We have nothing, nothing at this time at all that, that, uh, that fits to Bundy, other than the fact that Bundy, we know by tracing Bundy's steps, went through that particular area. Sharon, could you clarify something for us? Um, you've given us three counties, Washington, Kane, San Pete. Those are the south, I believe. And, Southeastern uh, counties. Southeastern, Southeastern part of those counties. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you've given us three. Does that mean three possible areas where well, the two bodies are? No. Bodies? No. The one could be in either one or the other of those, depending on how close to the line we were on. Two bodies. Two bodies. Sheriff, uh, an, an investigator from another agency, as I understand it, uh, told you there, there could be uh, eight Utah homicides uh, from Bundy. Uh, do uh, Weaver, Debbie Smith, and Sue Curtis, how do they fit in there? As, as the other ones have. They, are the, they were homicides that were committed during that period of time that we felt that maybe Bundy was responsible for, and we're looking at him on that basis. Any specifics given to those other? Uh, nothing other than nothing other than just the fact that they disappeared during this period of time and have not been recovered. So you're looking at any of those names that are still out there are still possibilities to fill in the blanks. That's correct. But let me make something perfectly clear to you. There will be none of those cases cleared unless we can positively convince the county attorney's office that Bundy is responsible for it. It isn't that we're going to go here and wipe the slate clean on unsolved homicide. The only person or the only cases that will be cleared will be the ones that we can specifically tie Bundy to by either physical evidence or by his confessions. And you said you were going to meet with other authorities. How soon do you want to do that? Uh, just as quick as I can get to them and get them all to decide where and when that they, they will be available for us, as soon as possible if I can. Who will this include? Pardon? Who will this include? This will include all that was down in Florida. All the agencies were in Florida. I think it's important to all of us in law enforcement and investigating these uh, other cases that we get together with those people to see just exactly what they developed in their interviews with Bundy. Uh, during our investigation, what we found in the background and what we've concluded with Bundy up to this point it is my opinion of that, yes, that Bundy uh, would be one of the foremost serial killers that this country's ever known. 
And I don't think that we've even scratched the surface on Bundy, in my opinion. Is, is there now any other option left now that Bundy is dead? Finding any more evidence? Is there any suspicion that he might have left a log of what he did or anything? Anybody? I personally think, through information that we've received over the years, that someplace and someone Bundy has told the whole story to. And that sometime and someplace will come forth, I think, before too long. And when it does, we'll be talking to our legal advisors of how we're going to get that information. But there are people who spend a lot of time with Bundy. time was such that uh, uh, obviously I had to throw out a lot of investigative, interrogative, interviewing techniques. I, they, they told me I had 30 minutes. I wanted to find three bodies. I went in uh, and rather than begin, uh, Ted Bundy, when did you first come to Salt Lake City? Uh, I started by when you left Carol Durant, which way did you go? Where did you go? But the man sat there and didn't say anything. And uh, for quite a long time, I said, Debbie Kent, you went north, and Debbie Kent. Now tell me about. He says, Yes, yes. We'll get into that. Uh, let's let's look at the map here. I, I had to use names. Yes. That, that's, where does the first 